Here's a technique that you can use to see if you can investigate curiously the origin of your pain. What's this technique I can use so I can find out my pain, find out about my pain, find it, fix it, work out what it is? Well, it's none of those things actually, it's I wonder. I wonder is curiosity and although curiosity killed the cat, it might just do that for the pain too. When you're in fix it mode, find it mode, there's got to be something there. I know there's something there. Someone's told me something there. I've got to protect it. It's a really dangerous thing. I've got to live with it. Or if something hasn't been found, it's this invisible pain and disease that I've got that no other people have as well. But all of us together, we can't find out and the doctors have seen what it is and helping us. Nobody hears us or sees us or validates our pain. That's f fear, essentially. There's nothing wrong with those behaviours, but there's problems with them if you repeat them and the, you will not find the source of your pain through repeating them. So curiosity is rest and digest. So awe, inspiring, uh, wonder, uh, not knowing, but exploring. So this comes from... Uh, a counsellor who was coming for physical pain who knows much more than me about the mind and emotions and feelings and treatment of those elements and they've done it for 25 years but presented with pain, fibromyalgia, widespread joint pains had no awareness that all of those things were linked to how she felt. Totally oblivious um, like lots of other people and like lots of physios and doctors and me at some point in my life it's not unusual in fact it's unusual to be the smaller percentage of people who are seeing the overview of pain in this way and creating that awareness and looking curiously at the origin of the pain rather than these defaults it'll open the door to recover from it. So she experienced physical pain and we talked about the cues around it, whether she was sitting or bending or doing or the physical things are easy to find sometimes, most times, but she got pain when she wasn't doing anything that physically explained the pain, no movement of that part of the body, no overload of that part of the body, no actual physical involvement, and yet the pain would just come on. And once I highlighted to it the emotional connection to the pain, so it could be what she's thinking about, what those thoughts trigger as feelings, whether that's a prediction that she'll have to move or will be moving soon, or where she'll be moving to and who with, soon or where she's just been recently and what she's just been feeling recently and how that triggers pain in the present moment she understood it completely and what she says with her clients when feelings pop up when sadness pop, pops up or anger or grief or frustration and it isn't obvious to the person in the moment why they feel it she suggests to them um saying i wonder i wonder what that relates to I wonder what that relates to. And then gets them to explore who, why, what and when. Why the person's feeling the way they're feeling and the meaning behind it. Now as soon as you've got the meaning behind a sensation, you can do something with it. You can either let it go, rationalise it, or do something physiologically to kind of distract you from it or metabolise the feelings you've got. You're allowing your body to feel that way for the period of time. You understand the meaning for it and then you process it in a healthy way. With physical pain, when you don't have the meaning or you keep chasing it with fight, 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 flight, freeze or form reactions that simply drive the pattern, it's in a continual loop. So she's now looking at her pain when it pops up beyond the physical triggers that were obvious to her. And then now saying, oh, I wonder what, I wonder what it relates to. So she's not going into fix it mode. She's not going into fear mode. She's not going to find it. There must be something. There's got to be something. There is something. They've missed it. And she's not frustrated that she can't find it because she always does things that fixes things for other people. She goes into curiosity. I wonder. 
wonder what that relates to. Oh, there's those thoughts that popped up and the pain is there as well. And oh, yeah, maybe it relates to those thoughts. Maybe it relates to those feelings. Well, can I do anything about that at the moment? Well, no, but the pain just telling me to attend to myself. And so I'll do something physical in that moment that's kind. I'll sit with that feeling in exactly the same way that she would deal with the counselling clients and the emotions and reactions that link to those what are essentially emotional pains this is just a physical manifestation of the same thing so if you find you experience pain and it doesn't really make any sense to you from a physical perspective if there's an obvious physical trigger that you think i could i've sat long enough and i'm going to walk or i've walked far enough i should lay down or if it's a disproportionate reaction to that, ask yourself, I wonder why it's so bad today. I wonder why it's reacting that way. I wonder what else is going on that might be contributing to our, how I feel beyond what I'm doing physically. And if there is no physical drivers that are obvious to you, ask yourself, I wonder what that relates to. I wonder what else is going on in my body and mind. What thoughts have been popping up? And as soon as you identify them and make the link between those thoughts, how you feel, your reactions to it, and potentially the drivers of the pain you experience, you've got a route into unwiring that. I wonder, could you wonder too?